Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new, my name is Chris. I have another Guess That Perfume video. You guys really seem to enjoy this type of format last time I did these videos. And I had recently come across an article from Harper's Bazaar where the title was 23 Best Perfumes of All Time. And of course, I read the article and tonight's video is based on the 23 Best Perfumes of All Time as voted by the people over at Harper's Bazaar. So there's 23 perfumes for 23 different categories. So let's see how you you do. So the first category is best fall perfume. Spoiler alert, I do not agree with all their choices. So if you want me to do, if you guys would like me to do my version of this video, let me know in the comments. So to start off the list, the first category is best fall perfume. So here are the notes. Pear, pink pepper, orange blossom, coffee, jasmine, bitter almond, licorice, vanilla, patchouli, cashmere, cashmere wood, and cedar. So according to Harper's Bazaar magazine, the best fall perfume is black opium. And I got a new desk and a new little perfume holder so I don't have to hold the perfume up the whole time. I'm gonna put it right here. Oh, isn't that nice? I don't have black opium. I have one flanker of black opium and mine is called Nuit Blanche. And can any of you guess why I bought this flanker? That's right, you guessed it. It has a note of rice in it. So I'm gonna tell you about Nuit Blanche instead, which is a little bit different from the OG. So in addition to rice, this one has anise, bourbon pepper. It also has coffee, orange blossom, coriander, peony, vanilla, milk, caramel, sandalwood, and musk. So it's the vanilla, caramel, and rice, in my opinion, that kind of swings it into a little bit more gourmand category. So to me, this is the original black opium with rice pudding made with sweetened condensed milk. This is more up my alley than the original, and it would be even more up my alley if some of that orange blossom was tamed down. I like different types of orange blossom, but in here, it's not my favorite. If it was toned down a little bit more, I think I could like it a lot more. This is a like, not a like. It's still a little bit perfumey and I wish it was more gourmand, but that is in the number one spot. According to Harper's Bazaar, the best fall perfume. So in the second category, we have the best fruity perfume. And according to the big wigs over at Harper's Bazaar, that fragrance contains the notes of pink pepper, blood orange, sweet orange, mandarin orange, <laughs> lots of orange, bergamot lemon, two different types of rose, jasmine, patchouli and rosewood. So can any of you guess what the best fruity perfume is? And they say it is Miss Dior. So this is the 2000, can you see that? I'm gonna have to hold that. So I have the 2017 formation and you can tell the bottle or the juice is very dark. And the juice is darker because it is an older bottle. Now, I think I pretty much disagree with all their choices with the exception of a couple. <laughs> I don't think black opium is the best fall perfume. I think it is a good designer fall perfume. So it wouldn't be my choice. And in my opinion, there are so many fruity perfumes. I wouldn't have chosen Miss Dior, but I think it's a beautiful perfume. It's a very chic and grown up fruity perfume. I do think it's a classic. It's very universally appealing. And that rose patchouli orange combination really gives it a lot of class in my opinion. It's timeless and it's classic. So the next category is best luxury perfume and i know a lot of you will not agree with this choice but the notes are as follows we have saffron jasmine amberwood ambergris fir resin and cedar the winner of that category is baccarat rouge 540 i know a lot of you do not like this perfume i still if you're a return subscriber you know i still adore it maybe one day i'll get sick of it I'm not sick of it yet, but I think a really good substitution, I think a more universally appealing, a little bit updated version of Baccarat 540 that not everybody has smelled and people are getting sick of is Trajan by Electimus. This has a similar DNA to it. This one, this one might be too heavy for my, this one, oh, oh Lord. I think this one might be too heavy for my, my tiny little acrylic shelf. So Trajan is a nice year-round alternative for Baccarat 540. It still has a sweetness to it. The sweetness is a little bit more light and airy. It's lighter, it's fresher, it's a little bit more citrusy, and there are a few aromatics in here. So it's not as sweet, doesn't have that spun sugar, that cotton candy sugar in here. There's none of that Band-Aid doctor's office 
and I think it has lavender and sage in it to give it just a little bit a little bit of an edge separates it a little bit from from being a clone or being a sister to Baccarat 540. And it's funny, not a lot of people recognize this. This is not so similar. I went to a really big birthday party where I know there are people there who smell Baccarat 540. People gave me a hug that said, you smell so good, what are you wearing? So it's not a clone, it's not a twin of Baccarat 540, but for those of you who still want to wear Baccarat 540 with a little bit of an edge, Trajan is a great one. Okay, the next category is Best Sophisticated Floral. Let's see if you guys can guess this one. It's not an easy one. So the notes are, gosh, there's not many notes, Jasmine, Tuberose, and Rangoon Creeper. And that perfume is Gucci Bloom. I do not have Gucci Bloom. I have a flanker of Gucci Bloom. And this is Ambrosia di Fiore. Gosh, I really love my little... <laughs> Love my little shelf. I bought this perfume because I had a friend who wore Gucci Bloom and I thought she smelled really good. So that was her signature scent. So I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I chose Ambrosia because it has one of my favorite flowers in it, honeysuckle. If you've ever smelled a real honeysuckle, it smells so good. Wild honeysuckle grows all over the place here, especially in places where I hike and it's such a magical, beautiful smell. So the Ambrosia Flanker contains honeysuckle where the original does not. And this one also has a little bit of rose. So in my opinion, the rose comes out a little bit in the dry down. I, there's no rose in the original. So best sophisticated floral goes to Gucci Bloom. Next category is best vanilla. And I have a big problem with this next one. <laughs> I think most of you will too. So if any of you guys can guess this one, I am really impressed. And it has a note in here I've never heard of, but the best vanilla, according to Harper's Bazaar, contains the following notes. Cedar, coriander, hovewood. Please do not cancel me for saying that. Vanilla, more vanilla, patchouli, vetiver, sandalwood, and styrax. So the best vanilla is Dirty Vanilla. And I do own it, but I own a teeny little sample and I ordered a sample and as soon as I got it, I sprayed it a couple times, enough to get on my hand. It rolled off the kitchen table and smashed on the ground, but I was able to save it. And um, so I can still, I still have an idea, a good idea of what it smells like. I don't think most of you would choose this as a vanilla, but the reasonings were, I wrote down why the magazine chose this one, and it's because it has warm and spicy notes and a clear standout in a sea of otherwise syrupy vanilla scents. So even though I'm not really giving you my choices on this video, I'll do that in another video as long as you guys tell me you want me to do my version of this video or my take on this video. The one I think would be close to what they're looking for is Divine Vanille by Essential Parfums. This is not your typical sticky sweet vanilla. This vanilla has a lot of depth and character. It has a lot of different notes and I think it's very easy to like. It's a very universally appealing vanilla. It has spices. There's cinnamon, clove, it's incense-y, it's a little boozy. It almost has like a little ambery tobacco vibe, almost like, like that apple pie vibe. And it's a great vanilla because it is a niche perfume but it's super affordable. This, this 100 ml bottle is about $75, which is less expensive than a lot of designers on the market, particularly this one. I think this was running around $160. For a 1.7 ounce, this is twice that for less than half. So that's your best vanilla, according to Harper's Bazaar. I'm gonna try to go through these a little bit quicker so we're not here all night. The next one is best value. Well, I need to look up the notes, don't I? So the best value, according to Harper's Bazaar, has the following notes, not very many. Musk powdery notes and iris. Can any of you guess it? It's a perfume I've talked about a couple times. It is, hmm, it smells so nice. It is Glossier You. I think this made my, my clean girl, my white t-shirt, my inoffensive fragrances. This is a great perfume. When I first smell this for like the first 10 to 30 seconds, I'm telling you, it smells like Swedish fish to me. Then it smells like unscented chapstick that's kind of at the bottom of a purse. It's like swishing around against the debris. Powders, your makeup, and maybe even a pencil that's at the bottom of your purse. It's basically a clean powdery musk, and I think it is a super fabulous fragrance. It could easily be a signature scent. It's inoffensive, perfect for work, perfect for gatherings. It's not gonna offend anybody. It's quiet, but it does have pretty decent performance. And I think it's a really pretty perfume. So in the next category, we have 
most enduring. So the notes for the most enduring fragrance of all time are Aldehydes, Ylang Ylang, Neroli, Bergamot, Peach, Iris, Jasmine, Rose, Lily of the Valley, Sandalwood, Vanilla, Oak Moss, Vetiver, and Patchouli. Can anyone guess that fragrance? It is Chanel number no. five, Eau de Parfum. A classic, you cannot argue with the classic. There are so many people that still wear it. And here's a crazy story. I was at my Orange Theory Fitness Gym last week and there was a young gal, okay? She was probably early 20s. Maybe she was a teenager. She passed by me and I thought she smelled really good. She wasn't overly fragrant. It wasn't perfume in my face. It smelled like the best lotion, like a really good lotion, but I knew it was perfume. And so I asked her what she was wearing and she was wearing Chanel number no. five. You could have knocked me over with a feather. So it is enduring. Even young women are still wearing it. The the original, the OG, I will admit, is a little bit too much for me. It's, it's just not me. However, I do own a flanker that I really enjoy. And there's another flanker I still want to get, but I own, this is my second bottle, of Chanel number no. five, Eau Premier. This is more me. It has a lot of the same flowers. It has aldehydes, you know, you still have ylang ylang, but in here the aldehydes are really toned down. And instead of being overly soapy, this one is powdery and a little bit more buttery. And it's just more up my alley. To me, it's just a classic chic take on the original. And this is a really good all year round perfume. Absolutely signature scent worthy and a gorgeous floral that works really well in the warmer months. You can wear this in the cold. I have worn this in the cold. It's a year round perfume. I tend to wear it kind of spring. Spring is when I wear this one the most now. The next category is most sensual fragrance. And I don't agree with this next one. Some of you will. But again, my time to speak is in my video that will be done in a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, we'll see. But according to Harper's Bazaar, the most sensual fragrance of all time has the following notes. Good grief, if I can get to them, here we go. Okay, truffle, <laughs> gardenia, blackcurrant, ylang ylang, jasmine, bergamot, mandarin orange, amalfi lemon, orchid, spices, gardenia, fruity notes, ylang ylang, goodness gracious, okay. It's in the base. It's in the top and the mid. Jasmine, lotus, and then in the base, we have chocolate, patchouli, vanilla, incense, amber, sandalwood, vetiver, and white musk. And according to the folks over at Harper's Bazaar, they seem to think that black orchid is the most sensual fragrance. It's, it's you know, yeah, I get it. I can see the right people thinking that. I don't think it's horrible. I know a lot of people just hate that perfume. I don't hate it. I just don't own it. I actually think I like Velvet Orchid better. I was over at Sephora sniffing around last week and and Velvet Orchid was there. I gave it a little sniff. I've tried it before. I think I actually might have had it or a, at least a sample. But uh, yeah, it's pretty. Wouldn't be my choice, but that's the choice here for best sensual fragrance. Tell me what you guys think. Do you guys agree? All right, moving right along. We have the most popular fragrance. So the most popular fragrance, according to Harper's Bazaar, contains the following notes. Tea, bergamot, osmanthus, orchid, jasmine, rose, freesia, orange flower, patchouli musk, and vanilla. So that's lots of flowers in there, hint, hint. So the most popular fragrance is Flower Bomb. I don't have Flower Bomb again. I have a flanker. I have Flower Bomb Dew. And the notes in here are completely different. I mean, it's literally, in my opinion, not even the same perfume. They should have just released it as a different perfume because I think they're very different. So the notes in Flower Bomb Dew are Ambrette, Pear, Dewdrop, Bergamot, Iris Rose, White Musk, Cashmoran, and Heliotrope. So this one has a lot of musk. It's very powdery, probably from the iris. The patchouli's toned down. It's very musky and it's a lot more quiet fragrance. So I really enjoy it, it's very pretty. It's very pretty, work appropriate, good for nighttime, good for large crowds, and the flanker I currently own. Okay, next category is best fashion inspired, and we are almost halfway. So the best fashion inspired fragrance has the notes, has the following notes. Italian tangerine, pink pepper, bergamot, sandalwood, Egyptian jasmine, linen, vanilla, amber, and musk. And I'm going to be shocked out of my mind if anyone can guess that, I certainly wouldn't and it is Louis O1 Woman. I do not own that perfume. Miraculously enough, I do own a Louis fragrance and it is Aura Pink Magnolia. And the reason I bought this 
is it has cotton candy and I got this because of a friend of mine over on Instagram said I need to get it and it's really good I've had it for a couple weeks it's fresh and floral but it has a nice sweetness from cotton candy but it's not overly sweet it's not sticky sweet it just gives the florals in here a nice sweetness I will talk about this one more in depth on an upcoming video so that is best fashion inspired perfume and then if you guys have Louis 01 let me know in the comments what you think and do I need to get it so I'm gonna buzz through the next two because I do not own the next two and I don't own any flankers anymore I used to have a flanker of one but the next category is best soft floral and the best soft floral has the following notes peony lychee freesia rose lily of the valley magnolia Virginia cedar and amber and I know a lot of you probably have this perfume. It's a beautiful fragrance One of my dear friends. This is her signature scent and that fragrance is Chloe Eau de Parfum I love it and I can see why they voted that as the best soft floral It really is a really pretty perfume and I probably would wear it I probably would own it if my good friend didn't wear it because it's very pretty However, I'm gonna let my friend wear that and I'm going to reap the benefits of her wearing that one every day to work so that is where are we best soft floral so the next one is best transitional fragrance now it doesn't say transitioning from spring to summer winter to spring yada yada so that must mean best transitional overall and that fragrance is here we go cassis may rose freesia vanilla patchouli woody notes and ambroxan that's interesting i thought the top notes for this one were black currant cassis is like the twigs and the leaves of the black currant plant so this may throw a few of you but that perfume is yeah that's the right one it's Giorgio Armani C which is a very pretty perfume I owned it long ago and I owned a couple flankers I no longer have those flankers I am an empty nester with regards to Armani C still a very pretty perfume I enjoyed and I can see why it was voted best transitional perfume I do think it's a great it's a great fragrance year round not only for the transitions okay we are now halfway finished over halfway finished I know you guys are sad this is so much fun and the next category is best viral fragrance so what fragrance let's say in the past 10 years was one that just really went viral and that fragrance has the following notes oh my connection is terrible here we go i know a few of you are gonna get it sandalwood leather papyrus virginia cedar cardamom violet iris and amber and it is i finally have a bottle of it because i didn't like it for so long because a colleague of mine wore it and she smells i swear she smells like a dill pickle salad but i finally bought my own bottle of santel 33 look at that cute little bottle i got at nordstrom's can you even see it I'll hold it in my hand I finally bought it and guess what it does not smell like a pickle on me it's very woody it's spicy it has leather in it and it I can see how it could head in that direction to me it doesn't quite get there it stays fresh I think it's the papyrus in here that gives it this really unique character which has a woody scent profile but it's also a little bit spicy at the same time but I actually do like it I worn it a couple times I really enjoy it and I've purchased maybe a handful of fragrances that are very similar in the same category they're not dupes but there are certain types of sandalwood that kind of remind me of Santal 33 and I can do that I still need to do my sandalwood video that's coming up but most viral fragrance all right guys moving right along the next fragrance or the next category is best unisex fragrance and that fragrance has the following notes we have sea salt sage grapefruit musk and seaweed and that fragrance is joe malone's wood sage and sea salt a fragrance i absolutely love it's just such an incredibly pleasant fragrance it's an it's an inoffensive fresh everyday perfume it definitely could be my signature scent but we, i just can't have a signature scent i think we've talked about that before this is the one i take with me when i travel places and i know i'm going to be around a crowd i take my little decant i take my little travel size of wood sage because i can at least smell myself i'm happy knowing that i smell really good i have a small scent bubble and others can smell me when they kind of hug me and say hello and I always get oh you smell so nice you smell so pretty but it's never going to offend anybody and I think that is its downfall is that most people don't like that it has poor longevity 
I bought the oil from Oil Perfumery. This is the uh, Wood Sage and Sea Salt oil. I wear this all the time. I put this on my body, spray this on my clothes, and so I will roll it on straight on my skin. What I will also do is I will roll this out of my hand, put unscented lotion on, rub my hands together, and apply that. So that's another way to really lengthen out the scent of this fleeting perfume. And they're from Australia, but they ship to the United States. And I want to say shipping is free as long as you order a certain number of fragrances or hit a certain amount. And this is a dead ringer. This is dead on. This is a dupe for wood sage and sea salt. So best unisex fragrance. All right, for the next two categories, I do not own the fragrance. So I'm going to zip right through those. But the next two fragrances or the next two categories we have Best freshy. Now I have a gajillion million freshies. That is one category I have more than I need. And it would probably be hard for me to narrow it down to one, but it's one that I don't have. And the notes are black currant, grapefruit, lily of the valley, musk, and Virginia cedar. And I'm sure if you own this perfume, you will recognize it from the notes. But it's a bond number nine that I do not own, and it is the scent of peace for women in the purple bottle, really cute. I think I got a decant of it or a little sample. You know, they, it almost looks like a Tootsie Roll and it's very pretty. I liked it. I don't know why I don't have a bottle. I guess I was waiting for the price to come down. Every time I looked, it wasn't super. Yeah, the prices are not cheap. The cheapest price here is uh, in the 200s, low 200s. So yeah, not quite. Does anyone own that fragrance? And if so, let me know in the comments below. But when I do my when I do my video, I will certainly have a freshie or two in that category. So the next category will be best fragrance for beginners. And I used to have this perfume and I used to own about four different flankers. Every time a birthday or Christmas rolled around, my sweet spouse would get me a flanker because I think he really liked the way these fragrances smell. I like the way they smell. They are terrific beginner fragrances and I still think many of the flankers smell great. But this is the OG, they're talking about the OG. And the best fragrance for beginners has the following nuts. Okay, we have violet leaf, blood, gra blood grapefruit, I've never heard of that. Strawberry, violet, gardenia, jasmine, musk, white woods, and vanilla. And the best fragrance for beginners is Daisy. And it's a cute perfume. That is the perfume that I buy people who like fresh fragrances that don't like them to be overwhelming, too strong, too perfumey. That was the first fragrance I bought my new sister-in-law and she loved it. So I always think of my sister-in-law when I think of that perfume and she absolutely loved it. Drained the bottle and bought another one herself when she was finished. So I can see why they chose that one. All right, guys, and the next category is best cult favorite. So we have best viral and now we have best cult favorite. So the notes are, here we go, juniper, lemon, bergamot, pepper, pine needles, incense, orris root, vanilla, sandalwood, and amber. And I do happen to own this fragrance and it is gypsy water. You're not going to be able to see the label because of the lights and the focus and the autofocus is supposed to be on me, but I can see why this is a cult favorite. This is a smooth, fresh, soft, aromatic, woody vanilla that's very likable. It is a great gateway vanilla because it's not overly vanilla. The vanilla is there, but it's not foody and it's a soft, quiet vanilla that's kind of tamed down by a lot of other notes. This fragrance has a lot of my favorite notes, a lot of coniferous notes. We have pine and juniper. It definitely has like a lemony or a soft citrusy freshness that's not overly lemony and it's not cleaning product because you've got the woods, there's a little bit of pepper, a little bit of incense and the vanilla that kind of smooths it out. A very light crystal clear amber and this is a perfect year-round scent for somebody who lives in a warm climate. I don't wear this in the cold. It just, to me, it doesn't read cold. This is warmer months and it's a little bit too soft to cut through kind of the cold weather we have here, but it is a perfect, this never gets suffocating. It is a perfect fragrance in the hot weather. It's never overwhelming. It's never suffocating. You can just spray, you can just coat yourself and it's not going to choke you out. Again, it's light wearing another one that I bought the oil perfumery version for. I bought the oil perfumery oil for this one as well. And as long as I put that on my skin or I rub it, you know, I combine it with lotion and use that in addition 
to my perfume, I can get it to last most of the day. So best cult favorite, Gypsy Water. Okay, the next category is best cleanly formulated fragrance or best clean fragrance. And the notes are as follows. Now this particular house or line is known for not including all the, I don't think all the notes are ever listed on Fragrantica from this house, but I'm gonna tell you what they list. So we've got Neroli, Watery Notes, Musk, and Honey. And this fragrance is from a house that I talk about all the time, Henry Rose. I think it's one of the best cleanly formulated brands out there. I own two fragrances and will slowly work my way through the house. I, I basically think I liked everything they had. I don't think there was one I didn't like. There were ones I liked but didn't love. And there are some that are still on my wish list. And I really did enjoy Jake's house. So I thought Jake's house was a very lovely like a fresh aquatic fragrance. I thought it was really pretty. It wasn't too aquatic and it wasn't too floral. Um, I own Queens and Monsters, which isn't really in the same category. It's not a floral. It is a, it's a fresh sandalwood vanilla that I love and I've talked about it so many times I'm not gonna talk about it again. But Jake's House won Best Clean Fragrance. So the next category is Best Gourmand. I really miss this perfume. I used to own it and a couple co-workers used to wear it, have good memories, but then Best Gourmand, according to Harper's Bazaar, contains the following notes. We have caramel, powdery notes, musk, benzoin, and vanilla. So a really nice, sweet, powdery, musky, caramel vanilla, and that perfume is Prada Candy. I still love that perfume. A nurse that used to work with me, that was her very favorite perfume, and I remember buying at least one bottle for her for Christmas. She just always smelled so good when she wore it to work and I miss it. We don't own that anymore. But I did give my daughter for Christmas a couple years ago a flanker. And I think this one is called Prada Candy Kiss. And let me look up the notes for that. Obviously she's made quite a dent in this one. Oh gosh, yeah, the notes are very different. And to me it's a very different perfume. So the notes are basically musk, musk, more musk, orange blossom, musk, and vanilla. <laughs> Musky orange blossom with a little bit of candied sweetness. It's, it's really pretty. I think it smells really pretty. So there you have it for Best Gourmand. All right, guys, we have three more fragrances. I have two out of the three. The next category is Best Mildly Sweet Perfume. So that's an odd category. So the notes for that particular perfume are, we have pink pepper, jasmine, iris, patchouli, musk, and vanilla. And it is a classic that's been around since, it came out in 2005. So that particular fragrance, it's a Chanel fragrance, can anybody guess? It is Chanel Chance, the original. I never owned that. I know people who wore it, and I thought they smelled great, but I never owned it. I never loved it enough to have it. I have two Chanel Chance flankers. I have Eau Fraiche and Eau Tendre that are, in my opinion, nothing like this original. They're nothing like the OG, so I'm not even gonna show those. But um, that's interesting, best mildly sweet fragrance. I, I would agree. I guess the one that I have that's most similar, let me grab it, I forgot I brought it up here. The one I have that's most similar is Shiseido Zen. I've shown this a couple times. This is my version. This is my version of Coco Mademoiselle. This is my preferred take. It's very similar to the two. It's similar to Chanel Chance. It's similar to Coco Mademoiselle. It's fresher. It's a little bit more zingy. It has more citruses, it's a little bit more bright, it's more fresh, not as sweet, and a really good one to wear. This could definitely be worn year round. I just, for whatever reason, tend to wear it in the warmer months. I have heard a couple people in the comments say that it doesn't last long. I, I don't get that at all. I get this, this one has really good lasting power on me. I don't have a problem with that. So that is the best mildly sweet perfume. We've got two more and I do have those. So the next one is a trip. You guys are gonna die. You're never gonna think that this one would actually win this category, but the category is best eco-friendly perfume. And the notes are as follows. Oh my gosh, you're gonna need to take a nap after this. There are 10 million gajillion notes. Here we go. Cotton candy, coconut, cassis, melon, jasmine bergamot pineapple mandarin orange honey red berries blackberry plum apricot peach jasmine orchid caraway nutmeg rose i need a drink i need to wet my whistle rose lily of the valley patchouli chocolate caramel vanilla tonka amber musk and sandalwood oh my goodness i literally need to wet my whistle so can you guys guess it is oh didn't even take it out of the box 
It is Angel by Terry Mugler. If you own this perfume, you know that if you take it to your local Macy's or whatever, the counter, they will fill it up for you. It's, I don't know if most people know that these bottles are refillable. I do not have the OG. I had it. It is somewhere in this house. I think what happened is I had it in a box, like I had it in a box preparing for video and it was a small it was a small bottle and I think the box got thrown out. I cannot find that fragrance to save my life. However, I'm currently rearranging my perfumes. I got new stores, so I'm putting everything in one place and it might pop up in the next month. I have the EDT, which is my preferred version. It's a little bit easier to take. The notes are really pared down and it is a it's a fresher, less heavy less obnoxious take on the original and i don't think that has cotton candy but best eco-friendly perfume right there and then we have one more category and that okay winding down and the last category is best everyday fragrance and if any of you out there were wearing fragrances were in or were into perfumes maybe 10 to 15 years ago right when i was really kind of getting more into perfumes you knew about this perfume because it would have won it would have won the category for best cult favorite this was a cult favorite it still might be but it certainly was back then it seemed like the big hollywood actresses were wearing this perfume and you know you knew what it was i'll tell you the notes see if any of you <laughs> my gosh there's two notes okay that'll be easy gardenia and white flowers that's it so the best everyday perfume according to harper's bazaar was a cult favorite 10, 15 years ago, Kai, the original Kai. It's very pretty. I actually went through two bottles of this. <laughs> you could not get away from this perfume. I mean, so many people used to wear this. It was their signature scent. I'm talking like famous people, famous people in Hollywood. And it is, it's a beautiful, it's a pretty gardenia perfume. I've been through a number of bottles. I don't wear it anymore. But I do like the newer one that they released and it's called Kai. I found this in a little cute little boutique in Southern Missouri when I went there a couple of years ago. This is called uh, Kai Eau de Parfum Rose. So, so for the original Kai, this is straight up white flowers. This is white flowers, that's it. And in the beginning, it's a little bit indolic. But after that, it's just a very easy perfume. It's an easy white floral. It's a very pretty, easy white floral. Very versatile, you know, probably not black tie, but everything in between work, casual, signature. So for Kai Rose, so if Kai is all about gardenia, Kai Rose is all about the rose. So the rose in here is fresh and dewy and it's a little bit sweet. It does remind me a lot of the rose in Stella Eau de Parfum, the one that's discontinued that breaks my heart. It was discontinued. One of my favorite rose fragrances of all time. The rose in here is very similar, but once you get in the deep dry down, the rose fades a little bit and then you get back into more of the original Kai perfume. The original Kai florals come out more in the dry down. It is very light wearing. Neither of these is strong, particularly Kai Rose. So, so that was it. The 23 best perfumes of all time, according to Harper's Bazaar magazine. Tell me what you think. I'd love to hear your take in the comments below. And if you want me to do my version of this, which of course I want to, I'm dying to do my version because every single one of my choices would be different. If you want to hear my take on it, let me know and I will do that in the next month or two. So again, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed your time with me and with that, I will see you on the next one.